I want to remind some and encourage others that God is good. He is good to each one of us. Some may recognize it more than others, but he's still good to all of us. If you don't believe it, try not waking up one morning. God is good. It is his mercy. The older people, when I was a little born, they would pray. And they said, he's caused my golden moments to roll on. Meaning that he kept me alive. Amen. Continued to live. So we don't want to take that for granted. It's easy to take God's goodness for granted. But uh, I pray that we all just will have a praiseful attitude toward God and all the other things will come, whatever we may be desiring, right? Okay. Uh, in, in, in this, we've been talking about healing the sick. And so there's, I am trying to grasp the avenues, the ways in which God is bringing this about. It, it, uh, it was not necessarily the way <laughs> my wisdom would do it, but uh, I'm not here for my wisdom. So we are trying to, like I said, follow him. And, uh, but the theme is healing the sick. It is God's design. It is God's will that the sick be healed. Christ died that the sick may be healed. That's a decree from God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought out peace, our peace, was upon Christ. And with his stripes, we are healed. And uh, so we want to embrace truth. Would you look at somebody and say, embrace truth? Embrace truth. And we'll be talking more about this particular thing, his love. It's important to embrace God's love. If I don't embrace God's love, I can find myself. Guilty, feeling condemned, trying to measure up constantly. If I don't embrace his love, we'll talk a bit more about that. So on, um, we had a, a service on third, was it the third uh, Sunday of this month? Lesson. Third Sunday in June, I'm sorry. And uh, so we didn't, we just kind of kept it low-keyed. Uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, at least some of the intercessors was there and then the, the one that he laid on our hearts to be there. And so uh, long story short, there were, uh, God ministered uh, some things to some people, in which I am very grateful. And at that time, he asked me if I would, uh, He's been ministering to me to minister to among several, but one, Toyika, on a consistent basis. So I asked the Lord, and I'd call on her quite a bit, and so it got to a point where I said, now, Lord, I would be a little frustrated if somebody called me that much. <laughs> but um, it was like he said, just die to yourself. Trust me. And um, so we asked her to share a little bit. And uh, so I was preparing my notes and I felt him kind of nudging me to let her share a little bit before I preached the heart of what we're going to share. And I asked her to share some concepts, ideas, truths for us to grab a hold of what she, what God um, made clear to her as she was receiving healing. And I really want you to listen because I'm going to be reiterating um, some of the things that she shared. I'm not sure exactly how and what she shared, but I was out for a few minutes when she was sharing. But uh, Wanda was sharing with me the consistency of the concepts that she brought about. And that was exactly what I wanted 
uh, them and you to hear today. It's, it's not about her, it's not about the pastor, it's not about you individually, it's about Christ and what he has died for that we might receive. Not some of us, but all of us. Amen. And that is the love, the healing, the deliverances that comes as a result of the motivation of God's love for us. Can you embrace that? If so, let's give him thanks. I'm going to ask you to come to her. Would you come now? And I'll come back after she's done. Uh, George, can you bring that mic back? again um so uh, as the apostle was sharing uh last it was actually last week i had the um opportunity to share what i'm going to share with you um to a few uh, people and um what i shared was uh first of all um i've been in living word for uh, quite some time for a long time and the first time the lord ever ministered healing to me i was in high school um, so that's been a long time, <laughs> uh, but over the, um, the course, you know, just course of life, um, there has been that constancy of healing, uh, as Apostle shared, whether he was, um, you know, initially it was just at the altar, you know, um, on Sundays or Wednesdays, um, and then it was, you know, he might call or counseling sessions. I don't know how many have done the seven series of seven <laughs> sessions and then there were just phone calls. Um, and so um, but one of the things, so it's been a, a lot, a long journey of healing and it has been good. Um, I look forward to, to healing because one of the things that um, has stood out to me over the years and has been a constant is God's love. And that the healing that he is providing is all steeped in his love. It's really, it's not so much about me, um, except that he wants to make me whole and completely. And um, one of the things that I have discovered is that God knows way more about us than we know about ourselves. Um, I was thinking, you know, it's been, I mean, I've been healed through a lot of, a lot of things, uh, a lot of things that um, he has healed me um, from, and, um, but some things, and, and we were sharing, um, I think that, during that service, that the person that's, like, giving you the word to them, it, it might be a simple phrase, like, I love you, or just something simple, and it, but to the person that's receiving the healing, because they either know what they've been going through, or they know what's been on their mind, they know the thoughts that, that either haunt them or that just really are relentless, those simple words minister so much because it's coming from the Father. And again, it's, it's coming through and based in the love that he has for you. Um, so there have been times that, there's, it's so funny, um, a, a lot of times, I think we'll say maybe more often than not, the Lord actually does prep you for healing. Uh, whether you just went through something or somebody just like ticked you off or, and it brought up something else that really wasn't about that situation, but it was like either a memory or just a hurt. But um, so yeah, I found that he's always prepped me so that the thing that the Lord wants to address is like real fresh. <laughs> so you could just like, choop, I'll just take that out. <laughs> but um, but it's all it's all good and it's all been in his love. I mean, he knows, and we know, we know the things that have bothered us, we know the things that we've passed through, but sometimes we don't always know why we act the way we act. Um, we don't know why our outlook is the way it is. Um, but he knows that, he knows everything. He knew us from we when we were in the womb until to present. And he knows the things that have affected us. He knows why you think the way you think about yourself. He knows why you think the way you think about your family, your parents, your siblings, how you view others, why you don't get close to people. He knows all of that. And, and some of it is not good. I mean, it's just ugly. Let's just be real. 
But because he loves us so much, he, he looks way beyond our faults. He's not even thinking. Sometimes you're like, oh, Lord, he's out to get me because I did this or I, I reacted wrong or something like that. But he's not even thinking about that. He's like, let me get to the source of what's causing all of this, what's causing the heartache, what's causing the pain, what's causing the um, you to just lash out or whatever. But, um, but it's all, so over the years I've just discovered that it's all about his love. Pastor would call me sometimes. And he's like, I'm sorry, I keep calling. I'm like, I don't care, it's good, it's all good, <laughs> all good to me. <laughs> Especially now, um, as I, I'm, I still work from home most of the month. I, I have to go in the office like two days. And I was uh, sharing that um, pastor would call, and I still have my stuff. I'm at my desk. I still have my computer screens up. And um, sometimes we're like on the phone an hour. And, like, nothing goes down during that hour. <laughs> I'm, like, still, like, you know, making sure stuff is not piling up, emails. Nobody's trying to call me. None of that happens in that hour. And um, and I might be messed up, but I get myself together to get back to work. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's been the constancy of God's love. Um, some of the things just literally that we have passed through just require receiving God's love. It just requires requires that embrace, that just knowing that somebody understands, understands you. Um, and this has been recently, um, one of, and, and before I go there, um, the Lord, because he is good and because he loves you, he's not going to take everything out at one time. I don't think we could survive that. Physically, we couldn't survive that. And um, so he'll snip here, he'll cut here, he'll get all he needs to get away from the root until you are ready for him to get the root or he's ready to take that root because he may, you know, he knows all things and timing and everything. And so it's been years of healing, clipping, snipping here. And the more open you are, you know, the more he'll take away from you. But if he knows that something is really tender, he'll just work around that. He won't go to that tender spot until you're ready. And because he loves you, he don't want to hurt you in the process. And that's why it takes a long time. I don't, you know, if he took out all that he has taken out from me at one time, I, I know I wouldn't be here because it was so tied and so intricately woven. The things that, the traumas and things that you have gone past through and we've passed through, if they started when you were a child and you won, a couple of things have happened, you you formed an opinion or a judgment about what happened or that thing attached itself to you. So guess what? As you grow up in stature and in age, that's growing up with you. And it has entangled itself so intricately in your life. It takes a master surgeon, someone who loves you and cares for you, who doesn't want to hurt you in the process, but still wants to get that bad, that bad out. And so um, I appreciate his love. Sometimes the, um, the healing is just receiving his love, and it, it does it does wonders. I mean, I leave feeling lighter because I don't have all that heaviness and the angst. And um, so there's been a lot of branches that have gone. He's gotten some roots of bitterness and, and fear and anger. Um, but more recently, uh, one of the kind of consistent thoughts that I had about myself throughout my life because of circumstances and things, I truly I honestly thought that I something was real like fundamentally wrong with me not functionally I can you know I can function but I to me on the outward people were like oh you know they had their opinions on me but for me I felt like fundamentally I was defective something had to be wrong with me and it was because of the way I was thinking or feeling because of abandonment but it was it was it wasn't just like oh they didn't love me but it was just that in over time and circumstances you know i always felt like something extra had to be done for me because i couldn't do it by myself um and so one of the things like it was i had this thing i had to do stuff by myself i had to be independent i had to do this because i thought i something was wrong with me no you know it it was just it was weird it was a weird thinking but that's how I felt. And then it was more recently, it was the Lord was addressing this right here. Let me tell you something about this mindset. <laughs> 
sometimes this is the hardest thing to change. Um, you know, you get to the heart is good, but you got to stay in the word to get this right here to change because the Lord is like, oh, I love you, I love you, love you. And you're like, oh, I feel good today. And then tomorrow's like, mm, I don't really know. <laughs> Do you still love me? Do you really love me? Um, but I know that he does because one thing, he has been relentless in proving his love to me. And I know if he's done it for me, he will or he has done it for you. The Lord loves unconditionally. He loves at your best. He loves at your worst. He loves, he knows everything about you, and yet he still loves you. He knew everything about me, and yet he still loved me. And I mean, sometimes some of that was directed at him. I'm like, mm, I don't really know about this. I don't really know about you. He didn't care about that. He was like, yeah, that's all right. I got that too. <laughs> But um, so all I wanted, I just wanted to share all that to say that God loves so much. I don't, I don't even know. I just feel like my words are, are not hitting the mark. But um, he is so <laughs> steadfast in his love. I mean, I don't even know, you know, what else to say but to tell you that God loves you so much. Because if he loves me as much as he has loved me over the years, and I'm not ashamed, I'm 46, I'll be 47 in a few, a few weeks. Um, and all the stuff that he has had to look over, look, I don't know, <laughs> erase, wash away, whatever. If he could love me, then I know he loves you. I know it, I know it, I know it. He loves you and he wants to heal you. His, his desire to heal you, whether it's physically, which I've had a physical healing, a miracle. Not too long after I got out of college, I, my, my, uh, the female system was acting out of whack. And the Lord spoke healing. And he called that particular condition out. He spoke healing to it. And from that time on, I want to tell you up until the beginning of this year, I had not had any issues with that. It's been, you know, what it's supposed to be. And then, but in January, it started acting crazy. Again, I was like, oh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> We're not having that now. No, no, no. It's been so many years. It's been over 20 years. You're going to get yourself together. So I spoke to it because it, it, was, it was weird. It was causing some, causing some other issues. But it has been what it's supposed to be. So I just thank the Lord for the physical healing. Because, again, he loves you. He, if he healed you yesterday or 10 years ago, because he loves you. That healing is continuous. You have to stand on the healing. Um, same thing for your spiritual healing. Um, you know, the, that again, that mindset is once he heals you, he's, he's building you up. He, stay in the word because that will also help build you up. And he keep this, this mindset um, in the right spot and not always either looking back. I used to always look back. I keep calendars. Trisha should tell you. And I probably, I need to throw more. But because I, I put notes and things, but I write things, events and things that have happened. So I'll look back. But sometimes, you know, you don't need to look back. Because looking back, one, you cannot look forward. You can't even move right going forward if you're looking back. But also it keeps reinforcing the, the wrong thoughts that were, again, you know, maybe as you were growing up and those things got fortified and they were intricately woven into your life. And the Lord, he knows what thread to snip, and he can just pull it right on out, and it's gone. But it's important to stay in his word and just, again, to understand and embrace the fact that God loves you. He only wants to do you good, and his love will not cease. It will continue for eternity. So that's all I had to share with you today. God bless you. That's good. Or if it was quiet in here, people were listening. But that was wonderful. That was very wonderful. Why don't you give her another hand clap of praise? I, you know, there are certain people can share and articulate truths, especially when it comes to the vision, better than others. And it behooves us to recognize it and give them the opportunity to share. And she was sharing one point. I saw the glory of the Lord just move in. And he was speaking to different minds that very thing that you were talking about. If we will be honest, something awesome will happen in this place today. 
But it's going to take honesty. It's going to take, it's going to take, and I'm going to make a call a little later on. That's why I want her to share. God want to love some people here today, he said. But it's going to require taking the mask off. Several of us, we got masks on. We want to look good before people. And that's just the way it is. Sometimes we love the praise of people more than we love the praise of God. But if we can just be honest, say, God, it's me. Toy was talking directly to me when she was talking about how I saw myself. If you say that, well, I should, I, boy, she was talking directly to me. But I can't let people know that. But I can let him know it. And I can let him go there and love me until that divine energy that comes from his love will change the way I think. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. And God was talking about healing the sick. Now, I don't know. There's so much to share, and I don't know whether I get halfway through it, but it's okay. And I felt like making an altar call when she finished, to be quite honest, because she said just what I felt needed to be said. But I said it ain't about the pastor here. Y'all ain't listening to me. It's about God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We just happen to be instruments of what he is saying and doing. That's all. And if we do right, we humble ourselves, he'll use us. All right, with that in mind, Second Chronicles, I want you to turn there, chapter 16. All right, now, as I said, I got a lot to share. I don't know, Lord, you just got to help me here with whatever you want me to share. If you say cut it off, that's what I'm going to do. Second Chronicles 16, are you there? Amen. Would you stand with me? I'm going to read one verse, and uh, it, it can stand alone, all right? And I'm, I'm not taking it out of context, but this verse is able, it's, it's, a, it's a, a timeless truth, so it can stand alone. Are you with me? Amen. Sometimes we may preach and take things out of context, and, and then people go and try to apply it, and yet it's like, well, what? But this will stand alone. Okay, Second Chronicles 16. Would you read that? Or in the rest of you. Okay. Chapter, verse 9. He said, verse nine. Oh, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Okay, we could have, I probably left off the latter part. Okay. But anyway. <laughs> All right, we're going to take that right there. Father, thank you. Lord, be glorified through your word. Let your spirit, which accompanies your word, take control. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. All right. The eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Now, the first thing you might, might, that might come to your mind, oh, Lord, that excludes me because my heart's not right. But you know how to do that. To be perfect here is sincere. It implies sincere. So when you come and ask God out of a sincere of your heart, believing that God can do what he said, and that God will do for you what he said, that's perfect. That's a perfect heart. Are you with me? All right, so that nobody won't uh, discount themselves and say, well, I know I don't measure them, so on. It means, that word there in Hebrew means sincere. 
toward him. And uh, so, all right. Taking that one timeless truth, it says or implies that God is eager to pour his blessings upon all who make it possible for him to do so. No, I need to say that again. God is eager to pour his blessings upon all who make it possible for him to do so. The second part of that is this. He is ever hunting for opportunities to gratify his benevolent heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He is ever hunting for opportunities to gratify his benevolent heart. God is good. He's good. He hasn't just started to be good. He was good before the foundation of the world. And he says, I am the Lord. I change not. So that means at this hour, even among we that are listening to this, God's looking for opportunities to show his love, to show his kindness. I'm going to read another scripture here. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 5. This was when God began to reveal himself through thunders and lightnings as Moses went up on the mount and they were terrified at God smoke. The mountains began to smoke. It was a voice of thunder and loud and so they were terrified. The people of God. Verse 22 in chapter 5 in Deuteronomy says, These words the Lord spake to all your assembly in the mount of the, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them to me. This is Moses talking to the children of Israel. And it came to pass when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire that came near to me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We've seen this day that God does talk with man, and he liveth. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? This is the children of Israel talking to Moses. Go thou near, talking to Moses, send him, and go thou near and, and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. And you speak to us all that the Lord our God shall speak to you. And we will hear it and do it. Now, do you know what? Now, this is what they said, right? So Moses, we, you know, this is too awesome here. You, man, we hear his voice much. Oh, we're going to die. You, you, please, you go up there. Find out what God is saying and you come back and talk to us. And whatever you say, this is what he said. And whatever you say, whatever God tells you, we're going to do it. It was then, verse 20, and the Lord heard the voice of your words. That's what Moses said. When you spake to me, and the Lord said to me, now listen to God's heart. 
I've heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken to you. They have well said all that they've spoken. Then God paused for a moment and said, oh, that there was such a heart in them. That they would fear me and keep all my commandments always. That it might be well with them and with their children. How long? Forever. God has a benevolent heart. God has a heart that just long to help people. So if God is not helping people, it is not because he doesn't want to help. If I could just settle that, if you can just settle that thought, God wants to help me. No matter what I'm going through, God wants to help me because of his very nature. I just read, and, and, I, and if you're like me, you said, I, I see it. That's his nature. So the thinking, what Torah was bringing out, the thinking was what God also wanted to touch and change so that she could re receive, are you with me? Receive from him. God's not punishing you and I. He's not doing that. He wants to help us. Now, as yesterday we were at the minister's prayer breakfast and um, we had uh, a minister from the Channel 2. And he talked about fear. And he brought out some really wonderful truths. Just, just, just so wonderful. But he said so many things about fear and it just made it so clear. But this morning while I was meditating on those things and thinking on the word, what came to me was fear makes you legal. So what do you mean by that? It makes you legalistic. It makes you try to prove yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fear makes you legalistic. Because there are doubts and uncertainties. So it makes us try to measure up. And so our souls find no rest. Make sense. Our souls are constantly trying to show God that we love him and that we want to Please him. But in the process, our souls find no rest. Because as soon as we utter a, a word out of anger or frustration, we're right back at ground zero. Because the only way we can prove to God we love him is that we do be nice. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So it is an endless struggle, but the root of it is fear. And God has not given us. That's what the man of God pointed out yesterday. And he said fear had torment, and he said that word I think is, 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 is uh, not only punishment but bait. It's a bait for us to be punished. Oh boy, gosh. That's like, oh my gosh. So, fear, it means that there are heart issues. That's what the Lord was saying to me. It means there are heart issues. When we fear, there are issues in the heart. 
Whether it be, it may be fear, it could be anger, it could be hate, it could be bitterness, whatever, it could be just whatever. But at the heart, there are issues. There, there's, there's unsettledness because of life, because of our significant others or because of what they call reflective appraisals. People did not give me the necessary praise that I needed. They only criticized me all of my life. And so because of that, because of their frown and their frustration when I tried to come to them, the, re the reflective appraisal, it showed me that I was not okay. So now I'm operating in fear the rest of my life because I'm not okay. So God speaks to me and says, you are okay. And I says, okay, praise the Lord. And then when it trickled down, something within says, you're not okay. And so we go right back to the same struggle. And it becomes a cycle over and over and over again. So that the only time I may enjoy my Christian experience is when I've done something that I feel God is pleased with. And since that doesn't happen all the time or every day, I fight all the other times. But I don't want people to know where I really am because I need the approval of people. Are you hearing me? Scribes and Pharisees were that way. But I believe he wants us to unmask ourselves and allow that genuine agape love to touch the areas where we've been afraid and frustrated and anger all of our lives. And then, and then and only then, for he says, for the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. So it energizes a person to uh, think differently. I know I'm okay. I don't have to prove nothing anymore. I've, I've been touched by the master's hand. And I know I am loved. So you begin to get settled. You settle down now because you've been loved and you know you're loved. Because you're loved. It's out of that assurance that you're loved that God began to bear fruit through your life. Others begin to see it and feel it. And then they begin to get help from you. They look at that brother, that sister, and says, wow, if I could only be calm. If I could only just rest in God's peace. Or maybe if I could find peace. But the Lord is going to love some people today. Not with the love of human because if he, if human love could do it then he would have no need to have come but his love is different the story is told about a man that was going to preach and he did a lot of praying and so what got distorted was he was basing God's dealing and using him on his ability to pray. He prayed six to eight hours a day, he shared. One day he had a meeting. And he had 
two hours before he had to preach. And his sister got in an argument and he got so angry and he hauled off and slapped her as hard as he could. And he was washed out. He just knew God is not showing up here today. I am wasted. I am, I am done. Two hours later, the service came. And to his amazement, that was one of the greatest services that he ever had in his ministry. He told me that. And he said, son, it's not your righteousness. It's God. It's God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And until we can receive of that love, we keep trying. We keep trying and failing. We keep trying and failing. But I've got some good news today. Somebody is going to receive from God today. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. God's love is expressed through his healing. Healing the sick, healing the soul, delivering from the oppressions of Satan. That's God's love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That benevolent heart of God looks for an opportunity to express itself. Let us never charge God with not caring. God cares. And so as we go, it involves trust. Look at someone say, it involves trust. Oh, trust. Amen. Hallelujah. We are to become dispensers of this great love and life of God. Hallelujah. And that's why God wants us to develop and mature because we look different, we act different. Isn't that right? Maturity. And so he's laboring to bring us more mature in him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For babies cannot do that. You remember when Paul said, uh, when I, 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 in, in Corinthians, I, 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 when I came to speak to you, I, I, I could not speak to you like, like spiritual beings. He said, uh, because you were babies, and they may have said, huh, I'm not a baby. <laughs> well, then Paul said, wherein there is envy and strife among you. You, you are not spiritual, that's carnal. You operating like just a human. He says, so I could not speak to you like you were spiritual. I, I could not open up these divine revelations to you. I, I couldn't do that for you because of you were yet carnal and operated like just humans. That's what Paul said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I got some good news for you today. God is going to help us. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. When Paul, when he, Paul knew that, you know, uh, when he was, before he understood God, he, he saw Jesus as just a human uh, man, you know, he just going around, he got a, and so he hadn't had time to search his doctrine out. But when something happened to Paul, he said, I, I don't know him no more after no flesh. Then he said, as a matter of fact, I don't know no human, no Christian after the flesh no more. In other words, I won't charge them uh, with things. If they, if they if treat me wrong, then I, I'm still, I have to look at them as a part of God's body and spiritual. So I can't turn around and treat them the same way that they treat me. Maybe they're just babies. But what I have to do is when I can grow, then I can pass it on. Cannot be mature and be a baby at the same time. Babies complain, they murmur, they find fault, they see things wrong, distorted. Look at somebody said they're babies. And Paul said, I want. God said, I want you to grow. Grow up in him. That's why the ministry's gifts of apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, it gets better. My God, hallelujah. Look at what 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says. Hallelujah. God says, and God was saying to me, he said, the word of God has to make clear God's divine decrees. The word has to make clear his sanctions. I said, okay, what do you mean? What do you? And then he started talking to me. He said, 1 Corinthians 15. He says, verse 22. For as in Adam all die. Somebody say die. die. As in Adam. But then he didn't stop there. He says, even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. It's a divine law. It's a decree from God, from the king. Isn't that right? So I must understand it, believe what he says. If God says in Christ shall all be made alive. And I know the subject was resurrection. But you're talking about the king. When they said to him, Lord, I know he's going to rise in that day, in that resurrection, right? Jesus gave them an astounding revelation. The resurrection is not a day per se. He said, I am resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're still talking about healing the sick, but there's some things God said I, I want you to know. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, uh, uh, if it is indeed, now what do you, what do you mean death, death, as in Adam all died? He said death was slow and steady. I said, okay. So he began to take me through the Genesis how the, the, the first ones that, uh, when they were first separated from God, living 900 years. 
I said, that was almost a millennial. How can people live that long? And then they started living 800 years and 700 years and 600 years and 500 years and 400 years and 300 years and 200 years and until it got to Abraham and when it got down to the time of Abraham the Bible says he lived 175 years not like Methuselah he said death was slow and steady and now he says Man's time on earth shall be three scores and ten. Yes. What happened to the millennial, the thousand years, God? In the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. So death, this is what you, want, you, want you to see. Death had set in. They began to slowly deteriorate over the course of years. And then there was sickness and disease began to increase over the years. Are y'all with me? And then sin and transgressions began to increase more and more and more and more until God says, I can't take it no more. That's not the world that I made. I will destroy this whole creation. And so he destroyed everything that was living except Noah and his family. Time goes on, but we're talking how God said they would die. And now, but the point I want to make also is so in Christ shall all be what? It may not happen just like that, but it is happening. You, you gotta hear, it is happening. It may be slow, but it's steady. It is happening. We are being made alive. And then, so, as he was making me to see this. What God wants us to see. We are made in his image. So there's a restoration of the image of God. There has to be uh, not only the, uh, uh, the image. But there has to be the knowledge. And the understanding that goes with the new image. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It cannot be the image and a lack of understanding as to what we're all about. So what God is doing is laboring to give us the knowledge and the understanding that goes with the new image. So now, the next thing he said, I want you to listen. Proverbs chapter 18. I, I, I'm tying it in. That's what he, how he gave it to me. So we can understand what he's doing and what he's saying. Go to Proverbs 18. When you're there, say amen. Are you still there? All right, I want you to look at verse 21. Death and life are in the power of what? Wait, wait, wait now, wait, wait now. Death and life is in Christ. I mean, life is in Christ, right? I ain't getting no amen here. Death and life lies in the speech. I, I want you to get this because this, this is something that God really began to make me understand. It's like, I want my body, local and at large, to really understand this fact. Death and life Lies in the speech. Although we are alive, 
We cannot speak death. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? There is an inconsistency. The new nature, there has to be an understanding and articulation of the new nature that we have been born of. I've been born again. And so since I've been born again, I'm a new creature. All things are passed away. I speak like a new creature. Since I understand death and life lies in the tongue, I'm a new creature, and I'm made, get this, in the image and likeness of my creator, I must grow, so I say grow, to maturity so I can understand these truths. I cannot be loose and speak what I want to speak. Oh, you got it. I don't have the freedom in Christ to say anything I want to say. Please hear what the Spirit is saying today. We must say, now, death, from the old nature, we speak death. We speak out of a dead nature, right? But out of the nature that's alive, after Christ, we speak life and we speak truth. We speak life and we speak truth. All right. Uh, this part I want to just kind of slowly go through because this is this is one of the big things that the Lord did with me about what he's changing in our lives. Life is constantly working, but we must understand that it's working, but it doesn't look like it's working because we walk by faith, no longer by sight. We no longer walk based on what we see. We no longer walk based on what we understand. We walk by faith. And that is in what God has said. If God says I'm alive, then I need to say I'm alive through him. I hope this has helped you like it's really been speaking to my heart. It's like God says, this is where the body is and this is what I want to change. Now this is what he, God said this. God said this. He said, many of my people are in predicaments, predicaments that their words Put them in. So he said. So. Does God care for me? Yes he does. Because he's trying to show me. Where the failure lies at times. Are you with me? So once I. Develop and grow. Grow to this. Point. Learn to hold my peace. Look at somebody say. <laughs> and he reminded me of something he said to me years ago. He said the purpose of the tongue. It remains the same. Although. In other words, it remained the same as when we were created, what it was created for. It still remains, this, the purpose is the same. And then he said, the tongue is to be used to bring life and health because you're made in the image of God. Now, let's say God got mad at me. Get out of here. 
Xavier. You know what that would do to me? With, how much, with all that I love God, you know what that would do to me? It's like, gee, first, are you serious? <laughs> We're made in his image, am I right? Well, can we afford to do it? Are right, you getting quiet on me. Don't get quiet on me now. Wait, wait. Can we afford to do it if we're made in this image? A baby might, right? A baby will do it, they'll do it all low. And then they'll lay down and won't feel a, not an ounce of guilt. A baby will. But a mature saint is not going to do that. A mature saint will not do it. A mature saint, as a matter of fact, when a mature saint offends somebody, they're going to go back to that person and make it right. If they're mature. But if they're immature, they'll make excuses. Well, if they hadn't done this, I wouldn't have done so and so. That's immaturity. You do unto others as you would have them do to you. Would you have them talk about you behind your back? Would you have them to gather in a little sect, a little party and talk about you? Would you really want somebody to do that to you? Some people say, well, sex and song may break my bones. <laughs> but words will never hurt me. You are kidding me. Words can do a lot of damage. This world was brought into existence by words. Isn't that right? He didn't raise a hand at nothing of his creation except when it came to man. Let there be the stars. Let there be the marine life. Let there be birds. Let there be this year. Words. Somebody say words. We're made in his image, somebody. We're made. Made in his likeness. A person that can control their spirit. The Bible says in Proverbs is greater than the mighty. Literally greater than a person that can take a city. So God is concerned that we learn to control ourselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's even given a governor. All right, let me explain that. A little boy on the farm, growing up on the farm, we had a tractor. This tractor was governed to run about 13, 14 miles per hour in high gear, maybe 15. And they had what they call a governor. And when I found out about the governor, another guy showed it to me. You could literally tie a, a piece of wire to the governor and bring it all the way up to where you're sitting, to the, the gas lever connected and then when you pull that governor after the the um, tractor has gone as much as it can go in high gear and you pull that governor it can almost double in speed so when I learned that you know naturally I played with it a little bit you know <laughs> but the governor was there so that it would not cause the engine to be too uh, overwork itself. Otherwise, it could blow up after long use. Am I talking to anybody? When we control our speech, there's so much less anxieties. So many situations that we would not find ourselves in stress. If we could just learn to control our speech. That's what God's saying. He said it's really, really important as believers that we learn to put a governor on our speech. And yet the eyes of the Lord going back and forth. Throughout the whole earth, 
He's looking at Johnny. Johnny's just running off at him. I was like crazy. He just, so he just passed right on by Johnny. And Johnny was saying, Lord, won't you do this? He just passed right on by Johnny because Johnny ain't listening. But Sally is over there. She done learned to be quiet and reverent because she's trying to find out how to do this thing. And so she's talking and worshiping and so on and meditating. She finds herself doing that, and all of a sudden, here comes the Lord. His eyes is constantly moving, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, he sees this little, little, little Sally over there. Whoops. Go there. I like what's happening there. She's really crying out to me. She's really depending on me. And so God goes and does something to little Sally, and Johnny's trying to act spiritual because he, well, you know, um, but God seems to be bypassing Johnny. John is frustrated because he doesn't understand how this thing works. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's the kingdom. The kingdom of God. The rule of God. To rule in the earth. He said said this the purpose of the tongue remains the same Proverbs number 16 says he says verse 24 pleasant words are as an honeycomb they do something to the soul they're sweet to the soul Lord have mercy and help to the bones. Pleasant words. Brother, you coming out. Sister, you coming out. It doesn't matter what it looked like. You coming out. Because God said that you're coming out. Mrs. Dean, you coming out. God said. You coming out. Hallelujah. You coming out. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. If God says you're coming out, I don't care what the devil is saying. I don't care what the situation is saying. I don't care what the circumstances are saying. But what God said is going to rule because he's watching over his word to perform his work. Dean, you coming out. You're coming out because God said you're coming out. Hallelujah. Pleasant words they're sweet to the soul. They're sweet to the soul. Uh, what do you mean? The soul can digest it. It, it tastes good to the soul. Glory to God. I feel like running down there right now. Ah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God said you're coming out. Hallelujah. You can't lose because you're on the winning side. God said it. God said you're coming out. Hallelujah. And everything that's holding on to you going to fall off like chains. Because that's what God said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I remember the years. But God's faithfulness. My God. Mm. 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 Glory to God. Now, let's move on here because I know we're getting along. Matthew 12. Matthew 12 says, uh, verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bring forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, 
they should give account thereof in the day of judgment. See why it's important to not just speak anything? Because by thy words, thou shalt be what? Justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. And I'll tell you something else. Words, when you speak right words, they're forcible. They're effective. That's what Job said. His friend, when he was down, the friend began to talk to him, and he was, they were depressing him. He was already sick, but they were depressing him. And he said, if I was in your state, I could say the same thing. If you were in my state, would you act right? He said, how forcible are right words. Isn't that right? How powerful those right words are. They, in our homes, in our families, listen, let's, let's, let's learn the power of right words, the power of words that are pleasant. Let's, 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 let's learn that. Uh, and let's see uh, uh, others change as a result of speaking pleasant words to them. Ah, don't, don't dog them, don't dog them, don't. No. Speak pleasant words. You know, speak words out of pleasantness. It's okay, brother, sister. It's, it's really going to be all right. If God is really in your side, in, on, in your life, then you're growing. Because in Christ, it is a process of him bringing more and more life. Remember what he said, if you continue in my word, you're my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What he's actually saying is that there's a growth process. I'll reveal a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And the more I reveal, the more life is going to be imparted. Isn't that right? So it is a process, you know. It's like the death process and so. So we must learn to speak the right words. I'm excited. There's a divine energy upon me. It is so, so, so on me until I got to say, okay, Lord, help me. But it's very strong. And uh, the prophet spoke that we would, this would happen to us. And um, God is changing us as humans. He's changing things that are just stubborn and been there for years. And so the word comes powerful to help us understand it ain't about a human being, it's about God. God's trying to bring us to line up with his will so he can bless us. So he can bless us. So he can bless us. He has a very benevolent heart. I, I tell you, I, I don't know what to say about God. He's just blowing me away with his kindness and his grace. He is just so terribly great. And um, I just want you to know that you can't go wrong by serving God. Amen. Give it your best. Give it your best. Give it your best. When you serve God, give it your best. You know, if you're serving an employee trying to um, move higher up the ladder, corporate ladder, then you would give it your best. Give God your best. Don't give him the leftovers. Give him your best. I heard uh, this lady, a certain lady on TV, she says it's the little thing that God sees. You, know, you go to, you take a shopping, shopping cart there, and then you leave it in, in the parking lot, and they say, please place carts over here, and so and so. And God sees the attitude in the little things. You see, it's the little teeny foxes that spoil that spoils the vine. Come on, y'all. Oh, you know what I mean. Come on. Because he's watching. He's always watching. No, not as a judge. He, he's watching because he want to help somebody. So he's looking throughout the whole earth constantly, watching somebody with the right attitude. Oh, my God. It's like he said, oh, I want to bless that person. And I'm going to bless him. He's kind. He's kind. But I, that, the note that I was making is give him your best. 
Don't give him a sloppy service. Come on, y'all. You know, I don't care if it... Give him your best. And see, don't he get... Oh, whoops. Guess what he just said? He said, to the upright, I'll show myself upright. That means if I give him my best service, that's what he's going to give me in return. So there's the old nature and the new nature. Every idle word, the word idle here means useless, barren, careless, thoughtless, useless expressions. What we do have to watch out for is whenever the enemy comes to talk to us and make us get off on some tangent and try to use our speech. Remember, you still have that new nature. It's still there. But just that growth and maturity, the more we exercise, strong meat, you know what he said? Strong meat belongs to those that have actually exercised themselves. They've actually disciplined themselves. They discern this evil and said, no, if I say that, it's just going to cause some problem. So I'm not saying that. The devil said, you ain't got to take that. And you said, no, I don't, but I'm going to take it. And then, so you continue to exercise control. Hallelujah, because you don't discern, hallelujah, words that's going to cause arguments. Look, look at somebody say, don't keep going down that road. This is for somebody. We're talking growth, y'all. Learn to discern the things that, how the enemy uses our weaknesses and our fears, you know. And keep bashing one another, and he just it's just the devil at work. But we must learn how he works and not cooperate with him. He's gonna use the old nature, the old fallen nature. He's gonna, gonna use those things that we hadn't been regenerate yet. You know what I'm saying? These attitudes deep down in our soul that we had from childhood, like like Tor was talking about. He's gonna use everything that he can. You, you, you got to hear what I'm trying to tell you here. It's the devil after his God's people, but God is for you. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's got good things for you. He's got good things for you. Hallelujah. You know what happens if a person want to lose weight? When a person goes to a man and says, okay, I want to lose 50 pounds in a year. But he goes to the buffet bar and pigs out. <laughs> Do you think he's serious? He is not serious. He may be talking, oh, I want to lose weight. He is not serious. You hear what I'm saying? Somebody said, you just meddling now. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make is that we must learn to discipline ourselves. This is what God wants. We have his spirit. He is willing to help us. Hallelujah. He will give us the grace for everything that he wants us to do. He's not even asking us to do it out of willpower. He's asking us to give him the right of way and he will give us the strength and the grace to do it. I remember one time in a situation here, a brother, a brother told me that the boss got on him because he just was a new Christian. He was so, and the boss made him so mad he didn't know what to do. And all kind of uh, negative thoughts went to his mind. So he went to the bathroom and he started praying. Thank God, I really need help. I see what he's trying to do. And boy, he's working on me. He's a, so he was, kept praying to the Lord. And all of a sudden, grace came on him. 
And so when he went back out there, he had peace. And that boss came and repented because he saw that the man had really changed. And he, that man, he gave that man favor like you've never seen before. If we got help from God, we got to use it. Isn't that right? All right, y'all. I know I'm, I'm, I'm not meddling. Trust me, I'm not meddling. I'm just speaking to try to make clear the things that God is saying that the discipline, he, has, he lives in us and he wants us to grow to the point where we understand that words are costly. So we learn that because we've lived and with God a long time, so we don't, we don't just say anything that we say. I and mean, sometimes when we discern Satan is working, it's a time to be quiet. It's a time to be quiet until that spirit has been dealt with adequately. It may be through just stealing away in prayer. It could be whatever it is, but uh, we must discern more, discern how he works because he's always there to try and bring frustration to God's people. And he used that old nature and the old things that haven't been, re been renewed or regenerated. But we have a nature that is God's nature. And God don't want us to act right. Isn't that right? Act right. It is by grace that we're saved. But that grace comes to help us to live and be what God intends for us to be. Okay. Moving on. Uh... Now, this is what the Lord shared with me about. He uh, said, Abraham put his trust in the one that calls things that be not as though they were. Hebrews 5 talks about a person that's being inexperienced or unskilled in the word of righteousness. And, uh, but the deeper truths God wants to give. That's what he said. He wants to give the deep, deeper truths to us. And, um, but we must allow him to deal with the issues of God. And, I, and I'm speaking generally. I'm not speaking, uh, I'm speaking generally. I mean, uh, so the Lord breaks that bread down to where we are in the village. Isn't that right? Everybody's not on the same plane. I, I know that. And God's not saying everybody's at this junction. But he is speaking as a general thing. Um, I, I was thinking about baby food. When you, baby food, uh, my mother used to, take baby food, she would chew up meat and vegetables. And then she would take it and put it on her finger <laughs> and put it in the baby's mouth. I was like, yucky, you know. <laughs> but the food was very, very fine it was nothing that could strangle or choke the baby so the mother had to make sure that that was that right and uh, but as the baby continued to grow then the mother would let the baby sit at the table and begin to eat from the food like the rest isn't that right and this thing would continue to grow then you know, if they were eating a hamburger or steak or whatever, then that little child toddler began to take that same thing. And they, could, they got all of these. They got the incisors. They got the cuspids or bicuspids or whatever you want to call them. And they can tear that burger a piece you don't get because they've grown. They got all their teeth, right? That's what growth does. I, I, I want you to just grasp with me. Growth comes, the, the, the certain level of authority is exercised with growth. We do have authority now, but there's certain things God won't release until that level of growth. Are you with me? And once that level of growth is there, then God can use us in a greater capacity. So it's not our, it's something selfish for us. It's, it's for God's kingdom that he's saying, I want you to grow now. And so it's the word of God. We must all uh, take the initiative to get in the word, right? So important. As Toy was mentioned earlier. After God heals us, then the mind has to be renewed. Otherwise, the devil come back with the same old stuff, trying to pull you back into that. Okay. All right. So Ephesians 4 talked about the uh, lack of maturity there and so on, equipping for the works of service. And uh, let me say this here. 
Everybody's got to know and find out what God wants you to do. Everybody. Everybody's got to know what God wants you to do. And our task is to facilitate, to equip you, to minister healing or whatever and minister the word and so on like that and, and, and encourage and nurture and, and feed you with the word of God so that you would grow and to the point where you can begin to identify and, and through your relationship with God what God's got for you to do. Now, every Christian must come to that place. God is pleased when that happens. Some of us know, but some of us don't know, right? Some have been saved 15 or 15 years and still don't know. God wants you to know. Why? Because you are a vital part of the body of Christ. And God wants that what you have to be imparted to the body. It's very important. Look at somebody say service. So God wants service out of every true Christian. Some have begun to find how and what God wants to, how he wants to use them. And that's the beginning of something wonderful because you begin to grow. You begin to see the gifts and things of God operating in your life. So you begin to grow in faith and grow in grace. And that's what God wants out of every Christian. Every Christian. Service is very important. I remember years ago, about 10 years ago, God, we were over there at the FOE, I believe. And God said to me very emphatically, he says, I want service. I was like, oh, Jesus, what do you want me to do? You know, it's important. So every person must know, you must come to that understanding. That means you got to have a relationship, right? You got to talk to God for yourself. It's so important, and I'm not saying that people don't talk to God. That's not what I'm implying, but just uh, energetic, encouraging you to know that God has you on this earth into the kingdom for a specific purpose, and he wants you to become activated in that purpose. You have something to contribute to the body of Christ, and God wants you to do that. So I'm bringing this to a conclusion. I know we've been long today. Um, a couple of things here that I'm done here. Um, there's some have been suffering. From loneliness. And there's some, God said, curses. There's still ancestral curses that is affecting our present life. And years ago he told me, he said, these people are not going to do right until they get freed from guilt. And then he said, ancestral guilt. And I was like, what? Okay. So he brought that back to me. So ancestral guilt is the effects of the sins of the ancestors. They have some of us in cords. You say, what are you talking about? Sometimes, now it was not your fault. Understand. It was the fault of the ancestors. But it's still affecting you. Are you with me? If you look at uh, Samuel, you'll see where David, when he's saying that God told him, okay, violence, murder, it's going to continue in your family down through a certain generation. Thank God for the cross. Galatians 3, that Christ has made a curse for us, Right? But now, if you and I don't understand certain things that's holding us from prospering or whatever, we're not going to do anything about it. Isn't that right? So just this morning, he was telling me about, for some, the, the sins of the ancestors is still got some of us 
held in captivity. And uh, what do we do with it? We allow him to break that thing off of us. And uh, one of the ancestral, uh, the effects of the ancestral curses was on, on my life years ago was in poverty. I did nothing to cause that to happen. It was the sins of my ancestors. And uh, the demonic powers, they just had a hold. And I, it, I didn't know how to break it. I didn't understand none of that. But then in 1987, I've shared this with many. Uh, he has put me on a discipline kind of regiment. And I stayed with it. And then in 87, he just broke it. That curse of poverty. He broke it completely. There are the effects of the sins of the ancestors on many of us here. I'm not trying to put, spooky about it, put somebody on something, something on somebody that you, I'm really trying to be honest with you so that you can understand sometimes what holds people back. Sometimes ancestors have committed acts of sin that passes down and uh, we're going to make a call in a little bit, but some of you can understand, as we said, even the medical science understand that very well. There are some physical conditions that passes right on down through the bloodline through generations. And so they give you this long sheet. Have you ever had a history of da-da-da-da, all these conditions? So they check them after you check the ones that you check. Well, my mama had it, my dad had it, or my, 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 my grandfather had so stuff. Curse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse, right? So we have to make sure that we understand so we can break that thing off of us so that we can go forward in God, all right? So this, just this morning, God was saying to me that, said he, he want to break some curses from awful people. Now, and as I was sitting there, back over there while they were praying in the back, God, I said, okay, God, he brought that back to me, so talk to me. And he did talk to me. He shared with me a couple of areas where this ancestral guilt and the sin, not what I did, my ancestors, but it still was affecting me. So what I did, I asked him about it, and he began to show me. I said, okay, what I got to do to break it? And he began to, first he told me what it was, and then and I began to, he said, renounce. And I renounced. And then I repented of my part for what I contributed, whether I understood it or not. And then I, had, I committed my whole step to God, and then came the presence of God. He broke that thing. There are many of us have not been able to prosper. When I was at FOE plant place, God said, ancestral guilt is why people can't break free. Some of you, it may be finances, poverty may have been a thing, but that thing must be broken. Some of it may be having children out of wedlock, could be hatred to, uh, of, a, of a, a daughter or a son, father, whatever that is. Could be abandonment, could be rejection. There's so many of those, but whatever the, 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 the sin and the effect of it, it needs to be broken. And God want to break it. He want to break it. He's not interested in you just living and being in bondage. He said, I came that you might have life. And I want to give it to, to the full. And that's the last, I believe that's the last thing I wanted to share concerning that. And, and uh, so remember this. We got to keep this understanding that it's our words. God's going to help us to discipline ourselves with our words. And so as we come to the Lord in prayer, he's getting ready to pour his love on some people here. But as I want you to remember what Toy shared. I want you to be, remember what she shared. God's ready to love some people. 
He's ready to love because he is love. And when he loves on you, it is a good thing. Father, we go into you right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for all that was said and done. I bless you because you are a gracious Savior. And I know, Lord God, that these are your people, Lord God, and it's your plan and your purpose to heal us all. I have not arrived. None of us have arrived. We all have certain things, God, that you want to minister. And it's what you want that we're interested in, not what we want. Because you know us, and as uh, was just said in the testimony, he knows far more about us than we know about ourselves. And so all of his dealings with us is based on his love, his understanding, and his wisdom for our lives. So we call on you now, Lord. We call on you. Asking for your Holy Spirit's help. Your wisdom. Send it from heaven. The help that only you can bring. I thank you. I magnify you. And Lord, there may be those that are watching by TV. And maybe they've gotten something from it. But I pray that the vital truths that you dispense through your word is for us to understand to keep a tight rein on our tongue to what James said in the word it's really important I thank you Father for helping us all we all need a certain tightness on the rein of our tongues so God I ask you to help us help us master because you are the master and you, you've got grace that we, we need to do just what you ask us to do Heal the conditions of our hearts that makes it difficult for us to hold our peace. I pray, dear God, send the help. 